What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Mind Something. If you're new here, my name is Jake and in today's video, the Fed wants crypto to do as they say, but not as they do. And then we're going to take a look at Hive Mapper. This is my first dive into Hive Mapper and I just wanted to share my findings with you guys, but I know that you probably missed me the last few days. Apologies, I've been very sick and finally starting to feel somewhat normal. Let's go ahead and jump into prices on some of the GPU mineable coins right now. So the time of recording is 10.07 p.m. on February 26, 2023. Bitcoin is coming in at 23,558. Dogecoin is 8.2 cents. Ethereum Classic at $21.34. Monero at $151. Conflux is starting to pull back a little bit, currently sitting at 23 cents. ETH POW at $3.84 is up almost 5% for the last 24 hours. Ravencoin sitting just over $0.03. Cents. Then we've got Chia at $39.67. Kadena at $1.13. Flux has pulled back about 7.5% over the last 7 days. It's currently sitting at $0.81. Cents. Caspa has had a nice run here the last 24 to 48 hours. It's up about 13% on the week and about 3.6% on the last 24 hours, currently sitting at 0.008744. We got all the way up over 0.0091, I believe, but it's pulling back a little bit now. We've got Ergo sitting at $1.69, Darrow at $4.34, Cortex at $0.26. Cents. Nexa has been up and down. Um, the other day, Caspa was up about 15% and Nexa was down about 15%. So not sure if some people are taking profits on Nexa and moving that into Caspa. Caspa is also pretty close to the Rust rewrite completion. But uh, today both of them are doing quite well. Then we've got Neoxa up about 7% over the last 24 hours sitting at 0 0.0008802. Dynex is struggling, down about 13% over the last 24 hours and down about 25% over the last 7 days, currently sitting at 6.7 cents. And then we've got Elephium is pretty much sideways over the last week, sitting at about 8.5 cents. Hive Mapper, or Honey, which we're going to talk about here shortly, is currently up 44% over the last 24 hours, currently sitting at 7 cents. And then Radiant is up about 2.26% on the last 24 hours, but down about 7% over the last 7 days. And Meowcoin had a nice little pump the other day. It's currently down 10% over the last 24 hours, uh, but up 44% over the last 7 days. And at one point, I saw a 24-hour chart where it was up 90%. But let's go ahead and take a look at trading view on Casper real quick. Now this is on the logarithmic scale. I just wanted to point out that we've been bouncing along this trend line here and it seems like it's going to support us. So we may pull back depending on what the rest of the market does. But if we do, I would imagine we come down and bounce off of this trend line again, hopefully, uh, which would put us at 0 0.007189 not financial advice, but if we do pull back to that area, may be a good time to pick some up. But let's go ahead and take a look at emissions over the last 24 hours. So right now, looks like Caspa dropped a little bit. We were up to $200,000 a day in emissions on Caspa. And Chia is under 400,000 again. Ergo is still about 68,000. Then we've got Conflux at about 57,000, Flux down to 37,000. It was at about 40,000 last time I checked. And then we've got Dynex down to 13,000. That usually hovers somewhere between 16,000 and 22,000. And we've got Darrow down to 12,240 in emissions. And if we look at the seven day difficulty change, Bitcoin is actually up 10%. Dogecoin is down about 4%, Litecoin is up about 9%, Chia is down about 1.16%, and we've got Caspa difficulty up 9.23%, and Bitcoin Cash is up about 10%, Dash is down about 13%, Monero is up about 10%, Ergo is down 6.64%, Decred is down 23%, Nervos is down 35%, 
as well as Conflux down about 36%. And then we've got Flux up about 8.67%. Siacoin is up about 2%, and Dynex is down about 10%. Let's go ahead and take a look at what I'm currently mining. So somebody mentioned the other day on my video where I disclosed my total earnings since the merge, and uh, they said, you know, it'd be nice if you were to tell us what you're mining. And I think I cover this almost daily, but I, I want to include it in the show from now on. So just so you guys are aware, uh, this is not everything. I do have a 3080 Ti in my desktop as well as another 3080 in another desktop that I have. But if we take a look at hashrate.no using their calculator, uh, including my solar, I'm roughly at about seven cents per kilowatt hour. So we've got roughly 4.4 gigahash on Caspa and about 1.6 gigahash on Nexa. And total power is somewhere around 3,700 watts. And revenue, we're pulling in $12.30 a day with a profit of $6.12. But let's go ahead and take a look at a single 3070 at 10 cents per kilowatt hour. Maybe. If hash rate done it no, will catch up to me. Okay. So at 3070, we got Nexa coming in on top at 14 cents a day in profit, followed by Ergo and Caspa at 11 cents. And then we've got Caspa at 5 cents, Eternity at 3 cents. K heavy hash on nice hash at three cents, Alephium at two cents, Dynex at one cent, ETH POW and Alephium at break even, Burtcoin is also break even, Cortex negative one cent, Ergo negative one cent, Radiant negative two cents, ETH Classic and Alephium negative two cents, Conflux negative two cents, Fero negative two cents, uh, Ravencoin negative four cents, Neoxa negative six cents, ETH POW negative eight cents, Meowcoin negative eight cents. We've got Grin at negative nine cents, Flux at negative ten cents, and Proof of Memes pretty much sitting at the bottom here at negative fourteen cents. Let's go ahead and take a look at ASIC Miner profitability. So we've got the K7 coming in on top at $26.41, followed by the D9 at $25.79. And coming in third, we've got the KA3 at $24.43. And let's see what else we got here. We got the iPolo G1 at $10.31. Uh, the BMK3 at $5.58. Gold Shell SC6 currently sitting at $5.22. And the Jazz Miner X16 sitting at $4.34. And I'll scroll down a little way so that you guys can see the rest. And then we'll go ahead and jump into the first article of the day, which is brought to you by Cointelegraph. U.S. agencies recommend old risk management principles for crypto liquidity. In a joint statement released by three United States federal agencies, the banking sector was advised against creating new risk management principles to counter liquidity risk resulting from crypto asset market vulnerabilities. The Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, or the FDIC, and the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency, or the OCC, released a statement reminding banks to apply existing risk management principles when addressing crypto-related liquidity risks. The joint statement highlighted the key liquidity risks associated with crypto assets and related participants for banking organizations. The risk highlighted concern the unpredictable scale and timing of deposit inflows and outflows. In other words, the federal agencies raised concerns about an event where massive sell-offs or purchases would negatively affect or impact the liquidity of the asset, potentially incurring losses for investors. The federal agencies specifically highlighted two instances to showcase the liquidity risks associated with cryptocurrencies. Number one, deposits placed on by a crypto asset related entity for the benefit of the crypto asset related entity's customers or the end users or customers. And number two, deposits that constitute stablecoin related reserves. In the first instance, the price stability depends on the investor's behavior, which can be influenced by stress, 
market volatility, and related vulnerabilities in the crypto asset sector. The second type of risk is related to the demand for stablecoins, the joint statement read. Such deposits can be susceptible to large and rapid outflows stemming from, for example, unanticipated stablecoin redemptions or dislocations in crypto asset markets. While the trio agreed that banking organizations are neither prohibited nor discouraged from providing banking services as per the law of the land, it recommended active monitoring of the liquidity risk and establishing and maintaining effective risk management and controls over crypto offerings. The agency recommended four key practices for effective risk management to banks, which include performing robust due diligence and monitoring of crypto assets, incorporating the liquidity risk, assessing interconnectedness between crypto offerings and understanding the direct and indirect drivers of the potential behavior of deposits. On January 3rd, so this has been a little while ago, the same three federal agencies, the F, the, excuse me, the Fed, the FDIC, and the OCC, issued a joint statement highlighting risks in the crypto system, including fraud, volatility, contagion, and similar issues. The agency jointly stated, it is important that risk related to crypto asset sector that can be mitigated or controlled not migrate to the banking system. The statement highlighted the possibility of changing crypto regulations with references to agencies case by case approaches to date. So to summarize this here, they want banks to guard themselves from the risk of crypto assets. And they're simply asking that <laughs> banks do their due diligence and make sure that they hedge against such risks. But let me ask you this, what type of risk assessment does the Fed have? When was the last time the Federal Reserve was audited should they be pointing any fingers? I don't know if you're aware of this, but the Fed is broke. Um, and so is the United States government. <laughs> we are currently at risk of defaulting on our outstanding loans. And Janet Yellen has been yelling <laughs> at Congress to raise the debt ceiling or we will default on said loans. And I believe that deadline has passed. I don't know if anything has been changed. Uh, but let me point out just a couple of other things for you. So the United States currently uses the fractional reserve system or otherwise known as modern money mechanics. And this has been going on for quite some time. And this is directly in the handbook as it was written. The purpose of this booklet is to describe the basic process of money creation in a fractional reserve banking system. The approach taken illustrates the changes in banks' balance sheets that occur when deposits in banks change as a result of monetary action by the Federal Reserve System, the Central Bank of the United States. The relationships shown are based on simplifying assumptions. For the sake of simplicity, the relationships are shown as if they were mechanical, but they are not, as described later in the booklet. And it goes on to say that banks are required to hold 10% of what is deposited, and they're allowed to loan out 90%. But guess what? That changed in 2020. In fact, on March 15th of 2020, the board reduced reserve requirement ratios to 0% effective March 26th, 2020. This action eliminated reserve requirements for all depository institutions, AKA banks. So what does that mean? That means for every dollar that's deposited into a bank, they're allowed to loan out 100% and hold zero dollars in reserve. Don't believe me? Let's take another look. So 1980 to 2023, Reserve requirement ratios, local currency demand deposits, United States was set to 0% in January of 2023. Well, how does that compare to the rest of the world? Or perhaps let's just take a look at the past. Let's see how it compared to the past. Let's go back 10 years. 
yeah, what do you know? 2011, 12, 13, 14, 15, all the way up to 2020, 10%. After 2020, 0%. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up, guys. So here's a current look at the national debt. We are currently $31 trillion, $31.5 trillion and counting. We're talking about $100,000 roughly every 10 seconds or so just further in debt. And how about our revenue? Well, we're up to 4 trillion in revenue, but uh, what good is that doing if none of it's going towards the actual debt and they just continue to raise the debt ceiling? Now, I hope you guys understand what's really going on here. You know, I'm sure you watch all of the other YouTubers. If you watch Coin Bureau, if you watch BitBoy, Anybody who knows anything about how the monetary system works and the World Economic Forum and everything are simply screaming at the top of their lungs that a great reset is coming. And I 100% agree. I think, and here's my tinfoil hat moment for you. Now, I may turn off some of you viewers, and I understand that. You know, sometimes this is going to be a tutorial channel, sometimes it'll be news, and sometimes it's going to be an opinion. And I am of the opinion that we are headed for a reset, and it's been in place for quite some time. So I don't know what that means for us as individuals. Um, I know that I'm doing everything that I can prepare, but I don't know when it's coming. It, it could be in the next few years. It could be in the next few decades. But it really is important to understand all of this stuff, and I encourage you guys... Don't stick your head in the sand and just ignore it because it's coming whether you want it or not. But I digress. Let's move on. So just wanted to uh, remind you guys of a couple of things. Number one, the Satoshi Action Fund. These guys are advocates for making sure that minors are protected in the United States from discrimina or discrimination uh, as well as advocating for laws. Uh, there's been some recent changes in places like Montana and I think, uh, was it Mississippi? or one of the Carolinas, I can't remember exactly, but they're doing a great job and they do deserve uh, some donations from you guys. Instead of donating to the channel, if you ever feel like doing so, please uh, go to Soshi, Satoshi Action Fund and leave a donation there for me if you would. Also, uh, if you guys haven't checked out the Beginner's Block, um, they have some great articles. It's an excellent blog for you guys to check out in case uh, you can't always watch YouTube videos and you want to do a little bit of reading. And then if you're looking for some mining hardware, a good place to check out would be Coastal Crypto. But let's move on and let's talk about Hive Mapper or Honey. So I've heard a couple of other guys talking about this recently, so I started to check it out. Now, I'm no expert in the subject, but I do want to share some things that I have found or discovered just by looking at their website. So if you're not familiar with Hive Mapper, uh, it's kind of similar in a way to HNT or Helium. Um, in fact, some of the same creators are, have their, their hands in this honey pot, so to speak. But let's just kind of go over some of the things that I've noticed here. So essentially, you are purchasing hardware, which is a dash cam, and you're putting this dash cam in your vehicle, and you're driving around, and you're mapping for them. Now, what they're doing with this data I'm not exactly sure. I, I don't see a huge, I mean, there's use cases out there for it, but I mean, we already have Google Maps. The big question is, who are they going to partner with and who are they gonna be selling this data to? So if you're gonna purchase the hardware, you're looking at an investment of at least $549 for the Hive Mapper Dash Cam, or you can go with the Hive Mapper Dash Cam S, uh, which adds, I guess, security features. I don't know if it's a car alarm or something similar to that to alert you if somebody's messing with your car. Not exactly sure. There's a little bit of difference in the frame rates uh, as well as expandable storage. Um, this one's a little bit smaller. And it looks like this one may not be shipping yet. And the existing one, uh, the cheaper one, is available. Now, I don't know what ship shipping times look like. Um, if you guys know... And if you purchased one of these and you received it, I'm curious how long it took to get it or if this is another one of those situations like the 
uh, helium hot spots where they're over promised and under under delivered um, but let's go ahead and take a look at the team here so we've got Raj Gokul who is or was the co-founder of Solana <coughs> excuse me then we've got Amir Halim who is or was the CEO or co-founder of helium and then we've got Spencer Raskoff who was co-founder and chair of Picasso and former CEO of Zillow and then we've got David Rogier CEO of Masterclass we've got Antoli Yokovinko CEO and co-founder of Solana we've got Bijan Sabat general partner at Spark Capital former Twitter board member Eli Seidman angel investor and entrepreneur former CEO of Tinder and then Jaron Waldman geotech entrepreneur and former Apple Maps executive so it's a pretty strong team um, they've definitely got a lot of influence and a lot of connections I would say um, but when it comes to trusting CEO and founder of helium uh, as well as Solana I don't know you know I, I have some reservations I know there's a lot of drama surrounding helium um, it has great aspirations but I felt like there was a lot of misleading information that came out we know there was also a problem with keeping people off the network that were gaming the system um, just a, not enough foresight in my opinion to address some major issues and concerns that came out of helium and then of course they partnered with Solana and as you know Solana just recently went down again the chain had to be restarted uh, which is not something you want to see out of a blockchain and you know it's good that there's a lot of development but at the same time there's a high degree of centralization in this so you know I have some some mixed feelings about that but let's continue on so a couple of other things that I wanted to point out if you take a look at the actual map system it's very similar to helium and I'm just kind of zoomed in on the area that I'm in I'm in West Texas and my area has not been covered at all so if I were to purchase one of these I'd stand a pretty good chance at uh, getting return on investment pretty quickly so to speak but you know how do you get paid so I pulled up the way that you are compensated and hopefully this makes sense now I don't know for certain that this is factual information because I feel like things are subject to change as the price of the coin fluctuates um, and then also we need to take a look at the tokenomic structure and really get an understanding of how emissions is affected over time but currently what they're stating is uh, let's take for example Seattle Washington so map credits two million three hundred and eighty six thousand two hundred and fifty or total road kilometers forty seven thousand seven hundred twenty five total price forty seven thousand seven hundred and twenty five so essentially what they're telling you is for every unique road kilometer it's equal to one dollar now <coughs> excuse me I did the math on some of the earnings for other people and converted this into miles for those of you who are in the United States and what I was coming up with was roughly about three cents per mile not a dollar per kilometer so you know one thing that's going to affect this obviously is the price of the coin uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the price of the coin real quick so right now we're up about 44 percent over the last 24 hours but let's zoom out here so it launched roughly at about 22 cents got all the way up to 32 cents and we're currently sitting at about seven cents so obviously that's going to affect your profitability here um, and if we take a look at let's see here I want to say tokenomics was somewhere on this page okay so we've got 10 billion in fixed supply with 4 billion allocated to contributors of the mapping network of the 4 billion tokens some amount will be minted each week based on global map progress so are they saying 4 billion allocated to contributors of the mapping network I, I assume that that means anybody who's got one of these devices is included in that so we're talking about 40% going to 
proof of work or the mapping service, does that mean 60% of it is going to the team? I, I don't know, but you know, if that is the case, that's, <laughs> that's not very reassuring to me, but let's move on. Um, how map progress works. Global map pro progress is based on the map progress of each region in the Hive Mapper network. In order to achieve maximum progress, regions must be dependently well covered and active. More useful maps equals more honey. Burn and mint system with net emissions model. So we have map data, consumers, I assume consumers, people purchasing the honey token. And then we have existing honey tokens burned, new honey tokens minted, and contributors. Uh, this seems extremely vague to me, but anyways, moving on. Map credits, currently two cents per map credit. Uh, let's see what else we got. Order the dash cam to begin. Yeah. So we've got the dash cams, we've got the team, we've got the areas. Let's, you know what, let's go ahead and take a look at, let's say for instance, Dallas, Texas. Now, I know this area has been mapped, so this is just to give you an example of how the the Explorer doesn't really update very well. So, just something to point out. Um, yeah, you can see there's a straight line that just kind of cuts this off here. What if we take a look at a different area? We'll take a look at... Actually, let's just hit enter, pull, see what pulls up. Well, I guess not. Let's try Orlando. Same thing. Nothing pulls up. Um, okay, let's just try refreshing this page, see if anything happens. There we go. So you got a little bit of an update there. So I'm assuming that, you know, if you're going to cover areas that have already been covered, you may still be earning, but you're not going to be earning as much. Uh, if you're going to cover an area that has not been covered at all, I assume that that is worth more to them. Um, but, you know, it's, it's as clear as mud, honestly. I, I'm still doing my research, but, you know, I, I would like to hear your opinions about this project. Is it going to be similar to Helium? Is it going to be better than Helium? Does this stand a really good chance of utility? Um, do they have customers? Who are those customers? In fact, you know what? Let's take a look and see if we can find any partners on here. Um, here we go. Investors. So we got Spark Capital, Craft, Funder or Founder, Collective, Solana Ventures, Shine Capital. Multicoin Capital. Uh, let's see what else. People are talking. So CoinDesk, TechCrunch, the information. Other values. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything on here about who is actually utilizing the service. So, I mean, perhaps that's a good thing. They're not. Uh, they're not putting companies on there that aren't actually doing business with them like helium did but i don't know i, I don't know guys one of, one of those things uh do your own research purchase this at your own risk but uh you know at the moment from what i can tell uh, i watched a couple of other youtube videos there was a couple of people that were saying they were hitting return on investment within a month there were other people that would take five to six months but based off of what i'm seeing I think you would have to drive over 10,000 miles uh, just to hit return on investment on, on an area that hasn't been covered yet. So, you know, if you think that that's worth it for you, if you drive for a living, maybe it makes a ton of sense. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. But uh, I'll continue to research and let you guys know what I figure out. Anyways, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed the content. Do me a favor before you go, hit that like and hit the subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.